Hey everybody, this is Kite Altera here, and in this video, I will be showing you how to obtain the PPQ526 permit, which will allow you to get ant, uh, queen ants shipped to you over states and overseas as well. But before I start that, I want to just say first that the honeypot ant is my favorite ant. Wish I could get it, but I can't. So, moving on. So here you guys see that I'm on aphis.usda.gov. It'll be A-P-H-I-S dot U-S-D-A dot G-O-V. I'll also have this link in the description so you guys can just click on it and you can go ahead and get started right away. So there are two ways to go ahead and get this permit. One is the online version, as you can see here, and the second one is the manual process. If you do it manually, you'll just click on this link here and once you complete section A of the application, you will mail it or fax it to here. If you're mailing it, this highlighted address. And if you're going to fax it, here's the number that you would use. So for the purposes of this video, I'm actually going to be showing you a little bit of the um, online way. And then the rest of it will be using the manual process. The only difference is the online actually takes you step by step, whereas the manual process just tells you, okay, fill all this information in and turn it in. Okay, so first thing you need to do if you're going to do it online is obtain a level 2 e-authentication account. Uh, I can't do it because I already have it, so I can't re-obtain something that I, would, that I never lost. So uh, once you go on the site and actually click it, register, put your name in and all your information, it'll actually tell you how to go about getting this uh, authentication. So what we're going to do is uh, go ahead and log into the e-permit system here. All right, so once you're in you, and you log in, there will be a section on the left-hand side, um, a bunch of little links that you see in a blue box. It's not on here because um, the rest of the page also, also shows the rest of my information, which I don't want. So you would click on a section that says create slash renew slash admin an application. Um, so for the online version, you would uh, choose your program office which for the purposes of getting an ant farm would be the plant protection and quarantine. And then you would select continue. Then you would click on the second choice, which is PPQ 526 permit to move live plant pests, biological control agents, bees, parasitic plants, federal noxious weeds or soil and select continue. Then you would select no for this section uh, because this is not an application to move or import select agents, which are all these toxins. So we're not worried about that. And then you would click continue. Next, it would be a new permit and select continue. And then you will select no for this section, which is this application does not contain confidential business information. Then you will select continue. All right, now we are going to switch over to this section. Now, the reason why I decided to go to this section instead of taking you step by step through the entire process is that it shows my personal information, which of course I don't want. Um, so it, the other one, like I said, takes you step by step. But for this, I'll just take you through. Uh, first thing you want to put in your name, title, address. The type of pest to be moved would be the anthropods. Put in your phone number, of course. Uh, you want to put in the scientific name and the species to be uh, moved as well as the classification, which you can easily find online. The life states, if applicable, such as adult, uh, larvae, pupae, that kind of thing. Uh, number of species or units, which will probably just be, you know, uh, number of species. It'll be let's just throw out a random number, say 50 or 60, but you guys would know. Uh, shipped from what country or state. Um, if it's going to be overseas, then you would just put whatever the um, places, such as the UK or Africa or Asia, you know, that kind of thing. Um, are they established in the United States? Again, you would just use a Google search like you did for the scientific name and classification so that you would know if it's established in the U.S. And for Section G, uh, when you fill out the major host of the past, you don't really need to fill anything out. So I would put N slash A, which is not applicable because you already put where they're going to be shipped from and the major hosts of the pest. I mean, maybe it could be like the country they're in, but yeah, uh, what I put in my application, I didn't put, I didn't fill out the section, but you can if you want to. 
Here is the what is the host material or substitutes which will accompany which pests. So you would indicate by line number. Um, for me, when I submitted it, um, I just put in through the company, um, the company I was going through. Um, they would just put it in a, um, it would just be a, a cotton ball as well as some water. So I guess you could just put that in here. Uh, your destination, whether you're on the online version or on the physical manual version, such as this, um, you would put in your, the destination, which would most likely be your address. Section nine is the port of arrival, which would not apply unless you're like some business or you're getting a large shipment. If it's gonna, if you're gonna pick it up at a port, so I would just put non-applicable if it applies to you. And the approximate date of arrival or interstate movement is when you're either gonna order them and they are gonna be shipped to you, or at what point are you going to go and pick them up. Next is number of shipments, who your supplier is, and the method of shipment is gonna be mail freight, uh, baggage, or is it going to be auto, mobile? Next is the intended use. You want to make sure you be very specific on this section. Um, for me, I just said that I was putting them as um, pet zoo on display, but um, if you have something else that you want to put in, I wouldn't advise you to copy what I say. Just put everything to your own words, like what are you going to be using it for? And if you are using it for some type of research experiment, I would uh, print this out. Um, once you're done with the entire application and attach uh, whatever outlines you have for your research and then upload everything together um, or you could just mail it off or fax it next would be methods used to prevent plant pest escape um, that's self-explanatory method of final disposition would be how are you going to destroy them are you going to use dry heat are you going to freeze them are you going to incinerate them microwave them what are you going to do and they're not going to make you do it it's just so that if you have to do it, you already have a plan. That's the whole point of it. Okay, next. Section 17 says that the applicant must reside in the United States of Estados Unidos and that you or we you know, um, agree to comply with the safeguards printed on the reverse of this form and understand that a permit may be subject to other conditions specified in section B and C, which we will go over in a few seconds. And then when you're done, um, as uh, you would go ahead and put in the signature. So you would print this out, um, sign it and everything, put in the date. Here's your warning, which we don't have to worry about because we're not going to do anything stupid. And this is it. Uh, section B is to be completed by the uh, state official. And section C is to be completed by the federal official. And they'll just put in their information whether they approve or disapprove and put in whatever comments they, they want to. And then the next thing would be the standard safeguard of the permit, which says that they need to be shipped in a sturdy and escape proof container that if once you get the pest everything that they are in uh, the packaging material the substrate the soil it needs to be sterilized or destroyed immediately after removing pests pests can only be kept within a laboratory designated area so keep this at your address don't be don't remove them from a confined area unless you get state or federal approval and that will be by just calling up whoever is your contact for the permit and letting them know that you would like to remove it. And then they would just say yes or no or ask you why and then, you know, it's, you'll be good to go and do what you gotta do. Next is uh, section five says that they are allowed to inspect uh, their confinement area within reasonable hours and without prior notice and as to safeguard the environment as well as the health and longevity of the insects themselves. And then you need to make sure that you prevent their escape by any means necessary. And if they do escape, make sure that you notify the office, which will be you know, the USDA APHIS department. So that's really it. It's really straightforward because like I said before, um, you wanna make sure that you gotta make sure you get this permit before you do anything. And that is just to safeguard yourself so in case something happens, Bam, you have authorization to move the ants, queen ants, and at least the USDA will know for sure that one, you're serious about it, and two, that you are, uh, they'll be made aware of whatever means you're using to ensure that they don't get out and become an invasive species like the fire ant did. So uh, if you guys like the video, please like, subscribe, and share with your friends, as well as provide any uh, suggestions on how you think I can end Prove this or future videos as well as give me any subjects or topics you would like me to cover in future videos as well. So this is Kite Altera. Thanks for watching and make sure you guys have a blessed day. Bye.